we're feeling okay. We're feeling fine. It will, by the time we get back to Alberta, I mean, if it's quarter to four now, that's nothing. I didn't, I stayed, when I came over last time, I stayed about six up past. <sighs> stayed to six up past last time. Right, it's a little, there's the little bench which I found a minute ago. It looks a little bit forlorn now because... I think if anyone was still coming out here, they would have at least knocked this bit down a bit. But this is for Audrey and Douglas, and it says, This little part of England, this little part of me, this little part where all my thoughts can wander and be free. I like that. That is nice. <sighs> Douglas Lee, Peacock and Audrey, Peacock. Somebody put this bench here, or... One might have died before the other, I don't know. But this is the sort of view. Over there you've got the village. Below me is the St Audrey's School and wet Wedding Venue, whatever you want to call it, Buddhist place. Over there we've got the Exmoor, which lead off the Quantox, which I would love to do. And I, I've really got to keep my health so I can still do this sort of stuff. Um... There's some places I can get up and do some walks. There's more coastal walks over that way by Minehead. And so I do plan to get over this way, say September when the schools go back, and um, get over, stay over and I can get out and do some work. But, and the churches, of course. This is all Somerset, by the way. I mean, we, I've been showing you the Mendips, bits of the Quantox, but that over there... Is a national park, if you like, the Exmoor. Wild Exmoor, much wilder than the Quantox, and much bigger. And you've got all these big hills as well that you can get on. Um, I can't remember, Dungaree Beacon, I think one's called. Over there somewhere, it's probably that big one up there, which I want to do. Then darted around, you've got lots of villages where you've got churches. Now, of course, for years I haven't been able to get out here. So I don't know how much longer I will be able to do that because of a vehicle. I mean, Albert is doing well at the moment. But I'll never get out all round there without a vehicle. No, no bus service runs round there. <sighs> right, so I just feel a little bit sad that it could do with a little coat of paint. The plaques are still on there, which is good. And I'm sure somebody will come along eventually and... Uh, in loving memory of Audrey Yvonne Peacock, 1915 to 1993. Audrey and Douglas love this walk and the scenic beauty of West Somerset. Yeah. Like I said, I've got bits of me all over the country, actually, in my jeans. And, of course, Europe. Scandinavia. I'm very European. But 40% of me is uh, probably more Cambridgeshire and Suffolk. But... Uh, because both my parents from that way, see. And then, of course, you've got my... Um, oh, we've, got, we've got my granddad, my great-granddad and my great-granddad. They were all born in England, going back, you know, 17 old. Um, and then they must have come over, the Palantines, they were called. They were all escaping persecution. They were like Protestants of some sort, like a bit like the Huguenots and the Weavers, because we've got them... Coming through my dad's side, by the way, we've got um, a lot of French coming through, like Dulu, and um, I can't remember all the names, but we've got a lot of French coming through that family. And then we've got Crispins, um, we've got Irish through, well, I've got quite a big chunk of Irish in me, so I think it's something like 20% or something like that, because... Um, uh, oh, we, we, we had the Quinns, the Quinn family. We're, we're from Ireland. He was an enameler, Thomas Quinn. He, he was a skilled craftsman. He was an enameler. You know, there's little portraits you do and you have to be clever, you know. And he, that was his, his profession. Um, yes, yeah, so although we've got that period in the East End, we do come from quite... Skilled craftsmen, 
Lords and Lady of the Manor, you know, it's all there. And, you know, like everyone, you know, East End epitomises poverty, I suppose, but we sort but what about, the thing is, they survived. They survived plagues and all this sort of thing. And poverty and bombing. You know, and all that and disease. They, they survived it all. And they weren't always in the East End. That's all I'm saying. It was Hackney, Bethnal Green, Stepney. Shoreditch. That was the parts of the East End. And then we've got Cambridgeshire and Suffolk. So, it's all very interesting. And of course, you have to go back to Alfred the Great and all that to pick up the Wessex crew that I found, I've, link, I've linked back to. Alfred the Great. And, um, you know, we, Saxon tribes and all that. This, it's bound to be about somewhere, you know? Anyway, these are sort of the things I think about when I'm out and about. When I'm in this, this beauty all around me and you've got fossils and rocks, geology, and you've got history and archaeology, and it's all there. And then um, all that social, cultural, economic, all mingles together to form where you've come from. You know, like um, Europe going back hundreds of years um, so yeah I love it all I love it. I haven't done a lot I, when I'm doing my what I call living tree which is what this is when I'm out walking and videoing and taking photos this is called the living tree um, this is for my descendants and for the future so I'm telling them a story I'm giving them some of my feelings. Something you we haven't been able to get unless you get hold of a diary or, you know, and I haven't got any of that. There are a few diaries from um, snippets of stuff from Sir Martin Stutfield, for example, but that was a public diary. That was more of like a journal. But there will be, there, and I have got other bits and pieces um, linked up somewhere where people sent let letters to each other from when they emigrated and all that and, their journey, and they described their journeys on the ships there are bits and pieces of stuff like that around anyway I'm going to turn off for a minute